It is 839. The movie theater massacre in Colorado has touched millions of lives, including those people with no ties to Aurora, Colorado, or its victims. The mass shootings have sparked many national debates, including what might be coming next for the film industry and for film fans. Should midnight movies become more procedural? Will metal detectors be installed? Joining us to talk more about these hot-button issues is Jason Mudd. He wrote a book, Managing Public Relations in a crisis and boy oh boy was this a, a public relations crisis uh, for the movie theater of course we got to think about the human toll it took more importantly than that absolutely i mean you have to take a pause and realize just how many people this influ impacts and influences i have a lot of friends and family in colorado and one married couple i know were planning to go see that movie and fortunately they didn't they waited okay so the movie theater industry responded warner brothers responded you know a few hours after they got word of this do you think they handled it in the right way by saying that we sympathize, we empathize with the family and what they're going through? I do. I think one mistake they made was saying they weren't going to release the numbers from the movie out of respect for the victims. And why, why is that a mistake? Well, because at first they said they were going to do that and then they ended up releasing numbers anyway, I'm told. So I think that was a mistake to say you were going to do something and then not do it. Okay. But the other thing is I think it's a little bit self-serving as a lot of people I know have just opted to not go see the movie right away and hold back out of respect for the victims. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think they anticipated their numbers might be down a little bit and in, in turn I don't think that was as genuine of a, uh, of a response as what it could have been. Do you think that we will see movies change? For example, perhaps metal detectors being implemented in movie theaters, perhaps no more midnight premieres, no more masks or costumes when you go see the film. I think that's a uh, very likely possibility. I think we might see a surcharge and paying an extra fee to go see a movie on opening night, you know, a midnight showing, to, add, to pay for added security, to pay for the added the movie theaters will have uh, on their insurance. But ultimately, I, I do think it's probably a good thing, you know, to prevent uh, some of that mishap from and, and mayhem from occurring. Uh, I'm sure there are movie theaters already today in certain areas that do have maybe metal detectors and things like that for certain showings, but uh, uh, Honestly, it's about public safety and what's in the best interest of the moviegoers. And as you and I were speaking, and as you all very well know, this could have happened at any time of the day. It could have happened anywhere, and it could happen to any company. So we're going to have some uh, ideas for local business owners to see what they can do in dealing with a crisis. Jason's going to be right back. Stay with us. Jason Mudd is joining us again. He is owner of Axia, which is a public relations firm. Thanks for being here to talk about what's going on in the wake of the Colorado movie theater massacre. So there are a lot of local companies. They own businesses. And you're saying what happened in Colorado could happen to, at any place and affect any business. Well, for anybody in business, they need to be thinking about, you know, not in a crisis might occur. And certainly, That's a scary thought. Oh, yeah. And it may not be as a massacre like this, but, you know, human beings are prone to make mistakes. And those mistakes can cost you business. And our research shows that for every dollar you spend planning for a crisis, you'll save seven when a crisis actually occurs. Okay, so what kind of planning can be done in case of? Absolutely. So the first thing you need to do is I, I put together a crisis plan. In that plan, you have a crisis team, you identify spokespeople, and you put together, you know, worst case scenarios or possible likely scenarios, and you actually rehearse those scenarios on a, you know, quarterly or annual basis. When you say rehearse, what do you mean? Well, you actually think through, okay, we've got a crisis, here's what happened, and you work through it uh, as a team so that you're practiced and enabled and you know uh, kind of what to anticipate next. And we actually, in the book, have a worksheet people can go through uh, and, and go through that process kind of internally, and it's a free download on our website. When you talk to business owners and tell them in advance they should be thinking about these things, what kind of reaction do you get? Not a very popular uh, per bet. person goes around and says, you haven't planned for a crisis, but right. there is one going to happen. So, you know, it's not really a, a sales or new business technique that we proactively use, but our phones ring often. And a crisis could be just from a small handful of customers being disappointed in your service. Uh, I tell clients, if you have a thousand, thousands of customers and 1% of them walk away unhappy, you're a pretty successful company. But if that 1% of 1% then post something negative about your business on the internet, on complaints board or ripoff report, suddenly that's going to impact your reputation and your business. So you've got to be proactive and anticipate how will you handle those things when they do happen to you. And websites like that, for example, aren't going away anytime soon. Yeah, long gone are the days where just somebody would stand out front of your business with a placard. I mean, people still do that, but yes. now they can hit the internet Oh yeah, and it's all over the place. Companies will window shop you, and what, com what Google says about your business is basically what people perceive to be the truth about your business. Well, that's scary stuff. Jason Mudd is the owner of Axia, a local public relations firm. He's also written the book, Managing Public Relations in a Crisis. Thanks, Jason, for being Thank here. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Richard?